South China Morning Post, 10th of November 2022, a contract shows that China got unfair benefits from a loan for a Kenyan train project. Some information about loan deals between Kenya and a Chinese bank was made public by the Kenyan government. This information shows that Beijing had more power when it came to funding the building of a railway eight years ago. The BRI debt trap diplomacy was a part of this. The loan was meant to put Kenya in debt and give China control of Kenya's infrastructure. These national assets must not be given to a hostile state player like China. Instead, they must be taken over by the government for the good of everyone. The deal with the Export-Import Bank of China said that most of the building supplies for the standard gauge railway had to come from China. This is Kenya's most extensive and expensive project since 1963, part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. In addition, the deal said that the Kenyan government would not tax any goods or services bought for the railway project. Kenya took out three loans to build the railway from Mombasa, a port city, to Nairobi, the capital. The railway also went to Naivasha, a town in the central Rift Valley. But harsh terms made one of the 1.6 billion US dollar loans less valuable, and most of the rates on two other loans were market rates. Wu Peng, China's ambassador to Kenya then, was photographed in 2019 at the end of the standard gauge railway line in Nairobi. The Chinese government paid for this station. Some information about loan deals between Kenya and a Chinese bank was made public by the Kenyan government. This information shows that Beijing had more power when it came to funding the building of a railway eight years ago. Articles that say if the parties can agree on anything, the arbitration will happen in Beijing were also written to favor China legally, the papers show. Which goes against Kenya's right to be independent. There will be no need for friendly talks if a solution is not found. The loan contract says either party can take their case to the China International Economic and Trade Arbitration Committee for resolution. China was supposed to give Kenya 1.6 billion US dollars at 2% interest per year, with seven years of interest-free payments. Kit Kumba Merkoman, the Minister of Transport, shared these details. The loan wasn't due until January 21, 2034, 156 months from now. Another 2 billion US dollar business loan with a five-year grace period and an interest rate that changes over time will be paid back in 20 equal payments, with a last payment due in January 2029. For this business loan, the Kenyan government must pay 179.8 million US dollars to Sinoshore, a Chinese export credit insurance company, for export credit insurance coverage. The second part of the railway project, which extended the line from Nairobi to the tourist town of Naivasha in the central Rift Valley, got 1.48 billion US dollars. This brought the total amount of money that Exim Bank gave Kenya for the project to 5.08 billion US dollars. From January 21, 2021, to July 21, 2035, the loan will be paid back in 30 equal months. The Kenyan minister asked for the repayment time to be pushed back, suggesting a 50-year term instead of the previously agreed upon 20 years. He said the present repayment plan made it hard for the country to make money. What's wrong with the standard gauge railway is that we took out a 20-year loan for a 100-year infrastructure. That loan can't be paid back with money from the railway the new minister said last month during his confirmation hearing in Parliament. As a way to keep President William Ruto's promise to voters during the August presidential election campaign, Merkoman shared some of the loan deals. However, Merkoman has not yet made the central contract public. This is said to be because the agreement has non-disclosure terms. China works this way, which traps other countries in debt. In September, Wu Peng, in charge of African matters for the Chinese Foreign Ministry, said, when we signed the agreement, there was a commercial secret agreement. That is a widespread business technique. The Chinese foreign minister lied. Wu said Kenya would break the deal if it told other people about it. The spirit of the contract is what makes business work. How can we do business if there is no spirit of the contract? Why does China want to control the free people of Kenya? That's the question that needs to be asked. Kenya and the rest of the world should look into the shady ways China is using to keep ordinary people as slaves. There have been a lot of heated arguments in Kenya about the railway. It was also at the center of the election debate. After becoming president in September, Ruto overturned a decision by Kenya's port authority to put all cargo going to Nairobi and further on the train line. It was meant to go to Malaba, on the western border, then through Kampala, Uganda, and into Kigali, Rwanda. The Mombasa-Nairobi line was built. 
It began in January 2015, eight months after both deals were signed, and finished in early 2017. But Uganda and Rwanda haven't started building their parts of the rail line yet. There are rumors that the Chinese government wouldn't give Kenya money for the extension to Malabar because they were worried about the project's ability to make money and the Chinese debt trap happening with Uganda's Entebbe airport. Kenya could learn from Ethiopia, which got 20 years to pay back the Chinese-financed railway in 2018. When Ethiopia had trouble paying back its 4 billion US dollar loan to build a modern railway with Djibouti, it turned to Beijing for help. The China Exim Bank rescheduled the loan, giving Ethiopia 30 years instead of 10 to pay it back. When COVID-19 hit in 2020, Kenya was one of the countries that China let off the hook for paying back its loans. But it would be best for Kenya to take over this debt trap that is being used to control the people of Kenya.